The show you're about to hear is a recording from Dr. Miller's webinar series titled Life Meditations. He began this series in response to the pandemic, and his goal has been to provide wisdom, practical tools, and comfort to people during these stressful times. Watch the entire series at drmiller.com slash life meditations. That's drmiller.com slash life meditations. This is Dr. Emmett Miller. Uh, so good to be with you here today. And of course, it's a very unique time in human history because um, we're dealing with the fact that we weren't as safe as we thought we were. I remember reading some of Isaac Asimov's writings. Geez, I think it was back in the 1970s. Mm, am I dating myself? Could be. <laughs> and what he said was, yeah, it's not, it's not nuclear warfare or running out of food. He says it's the infections that will be coming along. He warned us that this time would come even back that far. Many people have warned us since then. I remember seeing the enormous preparations the Obama administration had um, made in order to prepare for just such an event as we're having now. Um, but I, I think they lost the papers or something. I'm not sure. But here we are in the midst of it. I mean, I've always been a believer that there's a silver lining in every cloud or that there can be something positive that we don't um, always see immediately. But if we can believe that there can be a gift um, inside of a, of a struggle, then we have the possibility of finding that gift. Uh, something that the Mahatma Gandhi said. Um, he said, the ally, and of course he's talking about being in a struggle in that time, it was the Indian people versus the government of England. In our state of mind right now, it's very often our struggle with other countries in the world or struggle with people who are members of a different political party where there seems to be polarization uh, and we have adversaries. What Gandhi said was, the ally, the ally that you must always seek is the part of your adversary that knows what is right. The ally you must always seek is the part of your adversary that knows what is right. Notice your head has to, you have to kind of turn your thinking inside out for a moment just to understand what he's saying because it it's, doesn't automatically come to us. But those who teach peace and those who teach healing, those who teach transformation, understand this. So that is to say, here we are in the middle of dealing with the infectious diseases around us and perhaps there's an opportunity as the chinese said remember that in every crisis there is danger and opportunity wu ji danger and opportunity and the challenge then is of course to protect yourself from the danger and to look for and see the opportunity. Now, what I'm saying is, if you don't believe this is possible, then you won't see it. I mean, it may be true, right? There may be an incredible learning right now in the midst of this. In the last 50 years, having treated so many people with cancer, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, once we've gotten the cancer under control, and taken care of things as best we can, and the person's back to, you know, functioning in their life out of the hospital or whatever needed to happen. And they've said, cancer has been a gift in my life. I've learned more from dealing with the cancer than I'd ever learned from anything else in my life. 
cancer was a gift? It sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but they were telling the truth, that somehow they had found that silver lining. Okay, what I'm saying is that there may be a silver lining in the struggles that you're going through right now and that we are going through right now. There may be a, a valuable gift in the midst of this. That may be true. You don't know that it's not true. Maybe it's true. Okay. If it is true, then you may be thinking possibly that it's true. Or you may be thinking, no way, no way at all. It couldn't be. This, this is such a mess. There could be nothing beautiful here. Nothing to learn. No spiritual growth to be had from this. If that's your attitude, you'll be far less likely to discover that treasure than if you say, hmm, maybe there is. So what I'm saying is, can you open your mind to the possibility that there are gifts. So I'd like to begin with just a little imagery for, so that we can center ourselves. And um, go to that state of mind where we can entertain the possibility of great love, great beauty, great gifts in every moment. Zen mind, beginner's mind. So allowing your body to be in a comfortable position. And being aware that this moment in time, there's no other place you need to go. Take a deep breath in. And as you let it out, feel yourself becoming more grounded. Feel the surface beneath you. Whether you're sitting or lying down or even standing, just feel the pull of the earth beneath you and feel your connection to that surface beneath you. And be aware that there's nothing else that you need to be focusing on at this moment in time. And realize that this moment is the only moment that actually exists. And be aware that you can focus all your awareness on this moment now. Tune into your breathing. And allow yourself to feel the letting go part of your breathing. With each breath out, there's a letting go. And as each breath comes in, imagine that you're breathing in peace and beauty and love. Because peace and beauty and love surround you everywhere. And be aware there's no other place that you need to go at this moment in time. There's no problem that you have to solve. There's no other place you need to go. Give yourself permission to let go of any thoughts that come along that would tell you that you need to think about something else. Because nothing else exists. There's only this moment, the feeling of the surface beneath you, the rising and falling of your chest with each breath in and that with each breath in and out. Release any tension. Release any stress. Release anything that you've been grasping. Release anything that you have felt attached to or addicted to with each breath out. Just as you expend spent gases from your lungs, breathing out unnecessary thoughts from your mind, unnecessary tensions from your body. And for a moment, imagine that there is a great spirit 
spirit that moves through all things, a knowing, a universal wisdom, something sacred, something that deserves reverence. Perhaps it's a god. Perhaps it's a wise ancestor. Whatever it might be, imagine there's something greater than you, greater than me, and breathe in the love of that higher power. And imagine you can be aware of that presence all around you, the presence of that higher power, the air that you breathe, the sounds that reach your ears, the fragrances that you may smell, and each breath out lets go. Good. And see if you can let the breathing out become a little bit longer than the breathing in. Maybe 25% longer. Breathing in one, two, three, four, five. Breathing out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Breathing in five. Breathing out seven. And see if you can feel that breathing going down into your belly as your chest becomes more and more quiet, more and more peaceful. Good. And now imagine that deep within you, there's a sacred place, a holy place, a serene place of peace, serenity allowing your body to relax from head to toe. And when your eyelids are so relaxed they don't want to open at all, test them, feel their heaviness, and send that relaxation flowing from your eyelids throughout all the rest of your body. And as your body becomes more and more quiet, almost as if it dissolves into the space around you. Allow yourself to travel to that central place within and realize that you have a body, but you are not your body. Think to yourself with each breath out, I have a body, but I am not my body. And now with each breath out, I have a mind, but I am not my mind. Just think the words, I am a spiritual being experiencing the physical world. I am not any of the roles I play or have played in the past. I am a soul. Whatever that means to you, just think the words and feel what you feel. And allow yourself to feel that quality, that transcendent quality. And even though there may be sounds around you, and even though there may be sensations in your body, and even though from time to time there are random thoughts that come along every once in a while, random thoughts come along and you choose to not engage. As the Chinese used to say, you cannot stop the birds of sorrow from flying over your head, but you can choose to not let them make a nest in your hair. Let the unnecessary thoughts pass by. And within, remember what your deeper goals are in life, 
your vision for yourself and your family, for your world, for your business and your profession, whatever that might be. Perhaps it's happiness or joy or freedom or love. Imagine you can give yourself permission to move toward your goal. And here at that moment, to open and be fully aware of the love that is deep inside you. A love for your deeper self, a love for the loved ones in your life, a love for that spirit that moves through all things, the trees, the living things around you, the higher power for God, whatever that might be. Feel your love for this incredible gift of life that's been given you. And for a moment, recall some of those gifts that you have in your life right now for which you feel gratitude and think to yourself, I feel gratitude. I feel gratitude for the love of my family. I feel gratitude for the ability to help human beings heal. I feel gratitude for the smiles on my granddaughter's face. I feel gratitude for this breath that is entering my body. I feel great gratitude for the light, for the trees, for the autumn. I feel gratitude for some of the challenges that have been given me. I feel gratitude for the ability to turn stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Think to yourself, and in your own mind, I feel gratitude for, say it, and feel it. Feel it. That's the magic. Feel it. Let that feeling grow. Good. And feel your willingness within to let go of what you need to let go of. Or as people in the 12-step programs and other programs say, feel your willingness to turn over what needs to be turned over to release whatever it is that needs to be released from your being, from your life, from your mind, from your body. What needs to be released so that you can become more completely the person that you came here to be. You're not an accident. <laughs> you have a purpose for being here. You don't have to see it if you don't want to, but if you're willing to. Give yourself permission to let go of what you need to let go of to become or to discover that person you came here to be. Stay in touch with your ability to feel the quality of love. Give yourself ability to Feel love for you when you've made mistakes in the past. Attitudes you may have had, actions you may have taken, that you've disliked or even felt hatred toward. Give yourself permission to accept. The past is over. For deep peace, give up all hopes of a different past. Feel a deep sense of acceptance 
the serenity to accept those things you cannot change. Feel your willingness to be present here in this moment. Feel your willingness to learn the lessons that are here for you to be learned in this moment. A willingness to feel yourself able to be in the flow of accepting and learning. And let that gratitude within you overflow. Stay with it. Let it spill out of your heart into all the cells of your body. Breathe it through every atom of your being. Imagine gratitude and love flow out into your environment with each breath out. That as you speak, that each word is loving, that each word is a word of celebration of this greater being of beauty and of life. Imagine that each thing that you will touch will feel love and gratitude. Imagine as you go toward the future how you might carry this with you until in, into each of those things that you do today. Each thing and the next to walk in beauty, to share love, to trust that higher power. Really be the person you came here to be, the person you really want to be. And take a deep breath in. That as you let it out, allow yourself to gently reawaken into this moment, into the space around you. Letting your body stretch and move fully, wide awake and in touch. Hello, and for all of you that just stop by, I'm Dr. Emmett Miller, and we're here about how to conquer virus with your mind, including the viruses that are around us now. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit with you about um, how this can happen. A lot of people, uh, so many people, all of us in one way or another, tend to be unaware of the true, uh, the true power of our mind. Our minds are incredibly powerful, but we don't know it because we have been systematically prevented from knowing our power. In some cases, this has been purposeful. In other cases, it, it's been accidental. In our families, in our parents, brothers and sisters and teachers, just think of the mistakes that you've seen made. Just think of the ways that we have been disempowered. You know, the average child hears 30 or 40 no's for every yes that they hear. Don't do that. Don't touch that. Don't go in there. Watch out for that. Don't go there. How many times? Wow, that was a really clever thing that you did. Oh, I really like how much energy you put into that. Oh, I love the way you pronounced that word. Would you say it again? Oh, try that step again. Let me see that. <laughs> Those, I mean, and we should have a predominance of positives because the mind has an automatic negative bias. And so when we hear lots of negatives, don't do this, don't do that, you can't do this, this is dangerous, children should be seen and not heard, girls don't do that, well, boys don't cry, on and on and on. Every one of them is saying, you're not okay the way you are. They didn't mean to hurt us, but there are others, the advertisers, the, the politicians, the internet manipulators, the, the vast army of attention engineers whose whole goal in life is to attract our attention, to attract our attention and direct our attention to some activity that they want us to perform because it's going to earn money or power 
for somebody else. The hell with whether it's going to help us or not. That's what we're in the midst of. And you know what works? Making people believe in uh, um, that there's a plot out there. There's a conspiracy. Um, the um, you know the Democratic Party. You know they, they they sacrifice babies and drink human blood, and they're uh, they have a child sex trafficking ring that's going on. You know that they pray to Satan, or that there's this cabal that's about to do this. You know, or there's uh, this this group of um, deep right wingers who, if the the president loses this this election, they're gonna form a, a revolution, and all the guns are being bought up, and all the, the gun shops throughout the country, and we're on the verge of da 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 da, on and on and on. You know, on top of the fact of uh oh, you've got dandruff. No girl's gonna want to go out with you. You mean you're not wearing these new stockings? Ooh, you know, you have to be having this, this, that you're not enough the way you are. And if they can make us feel that way just for a moment, and in that moment, they show us a picture of their product, we're going to buy that product. <sighs> the degree to which we're being manipulated by the world is absolutely breathtaking. On the other hand, our minds have such incredible power to heal ourselves, to make us happy, to take us into the experience of love, to enable us to get together with like-minded souls and create something really beautiful is absolutely fantastic. That's what I'm dedicated toward. I realize that's what I'm here for, is to help you find that and so that you can help others find that. Of course, one of the ways you can do that is tell everybody you know about these little webinars. Who knows how long I may be still doing this, uh, but I'm doing it now, and each time I'm trying to put more and more awareness out there for people to give you the tools to, number one, understand and believe of what's possible, number two, to develop the mind tools that you can use to actually make the change within yourself and make the change in your life and make the change in the world around you. And to encourage you to practice. It's very so important to practice this because your mind's been trained for years how to do things a certain way that you know, the little elephant is hooked by a rope to a little stake in the ground, and the little elephant can't pull loose from that stake and goes, huh, I guess I'm stuck. I can't go further than this rope. The elephant grows up to be a 20-ton beast. He still feels like he's tied to that little, that little stake in the ground. If he were to go like that, he could pull it out, but it never occurs to him to do that. And that's how we are as individuals and as a nation and as a world, it's ridiculous what's going on in the world. Ridiculous is the kind of infection that we're dealing with. And the, the ridiculous things that people are being led to do. And how completely intelligent people are so misguided. Just think about your political adversaries. Think about the people. If you're on, on, on the right side... Think about those extreme people on the left. If you're on the left, think about the extreme ones on the right. Wacko, right? How can they believe? I mean, they're completely intelligent. They're intelligent. They've been exposed to the same world as you have. How come they don't see it? Amazing. And the dirty little secret is you have been misled also. Now, it's scary to think that, and most of us say, no, no, not me. Everything I know is right. I'm sure of the conspiracies I believe in. 80% wrong, period. But you have the power to be willing to see those ways, those errors that you made in thinking and feeling and behaving and in treating other people, and you have the ability to change those. But first you have to believe that it's possible that you've been making mistakes. Believe that it's possible that you can learn a different way of doing things, and by doing so, 
open your heart, open your mind, transform your life, and heal your body. And today we're talking about how to use that mind specifically to deal with infection and to deal with the current coronavirus that you may have or flu virus or whatever may be going on. This is going to be applicable for you. Soon I'm going to teach you what's called the one breath meditation. It looks like this. That's it. To a place of quiet, mind empty, body totally relaxed. And you're totally in touch with the wise mind, the highest level of your thinking that can analyze a situation and see the truth and create a strategy for you to get to where you want to get to, given the truth that's there. And let me also, again, thank you for your support and the support that I that I really love is when you are telling other people about what you are experiencing here, a little bit about this work, um, to know that um, you can see all of the webinars I've done so far for the time being, they're all free at uh, drmiller.com, drmiller.com, drmiller.com slash life meditations drmiller.com slash life meditations uh, and you'll see quite a few dealing with many different topics send other people there tell them to sign up for the newsletter which you'll get if you go to drmiller.com for and even advise them to take a listen if you think it'll be useful to them and as well it's a great thought and a great support if you send us your donations. So very much appreciate that. You can do it by PayPal and I'll put up a sign later to show you how you how you can do it. But you can just go to PayPal and send it to Emmett, E-M-M-E-T-T -E -M -M -E at drmiller.com. Emmett at drmiller.com. Um, thank you so much for the donations you've been sending in. I, truly, truly appreciate them. And that really helps defray the cost of trying to get this program to you each week. Again, of course, we're, we're here every other week on Thursday at 11 o'clock Pacific time. You know, this release of this virus into the human population of planet Earth has certainly been a crisis. And I talked about crisis as being combination of both uh, danger and opportunity. We like to be able to look at the future and feel confident about it. Of course, one of the challenges for us is that we're not quite sure what's going to happen with the virus that we have anytime you're having an infection. So there's a kind of a sense of, of insecurity, of not knowing. When we don't know, there's a tendency to feel some anxiety. For some people, that anxiety is crippling, and they're desperate, and they, to escape from that feeling of anxiety, they may turn to alcohol, uh, may turn to other bad habits, they may hide in the corner, get depressed, or whatever. Uh, other people, it's not so severe, but still, uh, there's a problem and there's an anxiety that you can feel when you may feel it as tension in your body or headaches or problems with your diet or problems sleeping or worrying or things like that. So because that not knowing, that's an obstacle. And so that's how we're reacting to that obstacle. But what you want to do is to see that obstacle as a challenge, any obstacle. Try to turn it into a challenge, a stimulating, exciting, motivating adventure. Like if you, you play tennis, 
you want to play tennis against somebody who's better than you are, not somebody you can beat easily. If you, if you sing, well, you want to sing with someone who sings really well. If you want to take a cooking class, you want to take it with someone who's, who's a really good chef. So when you see an obstacle, try to look at it as an opportunity. As Henry Kaiser said, trouble is merely opportunity in work clothes. And as it's been said, one ship drives east and another west, while the self-same breezes blow. Tis the set of the sail, and not the gale, that bids them where to go. So if you want to start a new project in your office, for, for instance, and your desk is piled high with notes and letters and envelopes and empty coffee cups and apple cores, your first step should be to clean off your desk. If there's something important you want to do, you don't want to be distracted. In the same way, if you want to turn the obstacle of the current situation, including pandemic or whatever other obstacle you see right now into a challenge, clear your mind of any thoughts or emotions that would inhibit you from making this transformation. And once again, negative emotions, you must remember this, negative emotions actually act to shut down the higher levels of your mind. That the more upset or frustrated or uh, angry or anxious you become, the less likely you are to be able to find the solution to the problem. You may find a way to feel better. Maybe you'll take a drink or take a drug or do something else, but you're not dealing with the problem. So what you want to do is to get out of the emotional state, get into that quiet place, and to come into the present moment. To come into the present moment. Remember, emotions come from a part of your brain that thinks that something's going to kill you in the next five seconds if you don't start dissolving the organs of your body and turning them into glucose so that you can run like hell, right? But when that deeper part of your mind believes that there is no danger to you, then it stops secreting those chemicals. In a few moments of time, your body will metabolize those chemicals. And now you're at a place of peace and you can access the higher part of your mind to make wise decisions and wise choices. And what we might call that as presencing, coming into the present, presencing. Emptying your mind of doubts, distraction, thoughts, and feelings coming mindfully into the present. And you can use meditation, prayer, self-hypnosis, anything that gives you that sense of deep relaxation. Then, once you're able to do that, then you're able to bring the full analytic and creative power of your prefrontal cortex to bear. You can become aware of your very ample internal and external resources. You can access your inner wisdom and spiritual guidance. And you can then develop and initiate an effective strategy. And that strategy can be healing. And healing becomes means becoming more whole, more integrated. And often that means becoming whole by eliminating infections that are in your body. Sometimes becoming more whole is to cover a wound so that it can close and restore the wholeness of your body. And sometimes healing may be coming together with a loved one that you've been estranged from. Sometimes wholeness is realizing that this is the end of the road. And instead of struggling to live another two or three minutes, let's take those remaining moments 
and become aware of what a fantastic ride <laughs> this has been. How amazing to have had the experiences that we've had. And then embrace death when it comes. So depending who you are and where you are, that higher level of your mind can help you understand what healing means in that situation. In terms of dealing with the challenges that are in front of us now in terms of infection, we can use imagery to enhance our ability to both prevent infection and then to rapidly heal from infection. There have been a remarkable number of studies that have been done that show that the less stress that you have, the less anxiety that you have, the more you resist disease and the faster you heal. And that relaxation may come from doing meditation, may come from doing prayer, uh, may come from doing self-hypnosis. It may come from forming a deep, loving, caring relationship with another person, uh, allowing yourself to have more physical contact uh, with people, um, joining together with others, feeling yourself in a healthy community of relationships. All of these work and they work through that stress system, quieting the stress and giving us access to the part of us that does the healing. And when we do it with imagery, we do it in a very explicit way. So let's do some healing imagery that you can use with whatever viruses may be in your body. Uh, you can use it for any cancer cells that may be floating around in your body. I mean, your body produces numerous cancer cells every day, but it eliminates those cells. So um, you might just encourage it to keep doing that. So to begin with, Allow yourself to rest in a comfortable position, lying down or sitting up, and focus your awareness on a point on the wall or the ceiling opposite you, or any motionless object or point out in front of you, and keep them fixed on that point as if it's important to do. This is called focusing your attention, which is a basic tool keep them fixed there. In the same way, you're going to focus your entire awareness. And you notice the only point that you can see clearly is the one that you're looking at right now. And this informs your unconscious mind, your monkey mind, that you're going to be in charge of your awareness, what I call selective awareness or mindfulness. And allow yourself to be aware that at this moment, there's no other place you need to go nothing else that you have to do, and no problem that you have to solve at this moment. And therefore you can give yourself permission to relax, deeply and thoroughly relax. Now, allowing your mind and body to be at peace. Being at peace is a very important part of allowing yourself to experience deep healing, rapid healing. And soon you notice the point your eyes are staring at slips out of focus and your eyes want to fall closed. Let them fall closed. Let them relax down to the point they don't want to open. And when you feel that relaxed feeling in your eyelids, gently test them as you look upward toward the back of your forehead. Picture the word relax. And as you test your eyelids, let the relaxation in your eyelids flow throughout all the rest of your body. 
your scalp and your face and your neck and shoulders and arms. Let it flow down through your chest and abdomen, through your pelvis and thighs, your knees and your ankles and your feet, all the way down to the very tips of your toes. Good. Now in a moment I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath in. And then as you let that breath out, let your relaxation double over what you have now. Take a deep breath in. And as you let it go, feel yourself sinking down deeper into relaxation. More and more calm. More and more comfortable with each breath. Imagine a warm, soothing river of relaxation is flowing through your body. Feel it flowing through every part of your body, right out through the tips of your fingers and the tips of your toes. Letting every sound that you hear serve as a signal to relax you even deeper. More and more free, more and more present in this moment. And whenever an unnecessary thought comes along, imagine with your next breath out, you breathe that unnecessary thought right out of your mind. Focusing on the sound of my voice. And imagine that you're on a magic carpet. A magic carpet that can carry you through space and time to a very comfortable place, a safe place, your special place, far away from anything that could ever disturb you, a place of beauty and calm. And imagine you can look around and see the shapes and the colors and the movement around you in this beautiful place and feel your body absorbing the safety and the calm, the love in this beautiful place. And with each breath out, feel yourself sink into that little pause at the end of the breathing out. That little pause before the next breath begins itself. That's the quietest time of all for all your mind and body. Feel the little spark that brings each new breath in and imagine that that little spark of life is like a spark of light that starts each new breath in and that each new breath fills your body, that your entire body expands as the air breathes you. And imagine that little spot of life that point of light and love is like a river of light flowing into you as each new breath breathes you. Imagine that river of light is flowing into your immune system. Imagine you can let your conscious awareness focus down to a pinpoint size, so small that your awareness can ride your magic carpet along this river of light a river of light flowing within your body, flowing to the central headquarters of your immune system. Your immune system is like a special brain that circulates through your body like that river of light, circulating cells that know how to bring balance to your body. It detects foreign materials such as bacteria and viruses and damaged cells. And it sends special healing chemicals and white cells to eliminate them from your body. And your immune system detects areas that need soothing. And it cools unnecessary inflammation. Imagine yourself arriving at the central headquarters of this vast immune system. Imagine you're standing in front of a huge green field and you're on a podium high above 
a crowd that fills this field, and the crowd is made up of thousands and millions of white cells of many kinds. They may look like cells, or you could see them as, as your own internal police force, or good cowboys wearing white hats, or whatever it might be, an army of doctors and nurses, and each one has a special job. Some call forth an inflammation response to eliminate invaders and effective cells. Some decrease the inflammation when less is needed. And you can mentally visualize in any way that you wish. Together, they constitute a wise brain. Your immune system is a wise brain dedicated to carefully balancing their job of cleansing, healing, and soothing your body. They know how to do this. They've done it thousands of times throughout your life without your even being aware of it. Their job is to protect and serve you. They love you. Feel their love as you speak to them. Let them feel your love. Imagine your love pours out of your heart. Imagine that river of light flows out to all of these loving white cells. See it awakening their ability to do their assigned jobs more perfectly and visualize them flowing out throughout all of your body. Picture your white cells eliminating viruses and bacteria and damaged cells, vigorously doing the job they know very well how to do and doing just the right amount. Imagine them flowing like a healing mist on that river of light, flowing through your blood vessels and through your capillaries, the smallest vessels, coating your capillaries with a protective layer of defenders blocking viruses from attacking the cells of your capillaries and of your arteries and veins. Picture your immune system vigorously eliminating any viruses to try. See them flowing through all the organs in your abdomen, your immune cells flowing through your heart and lungs, identifying, inactivating, and dissolving any viral particles swiftly and efficiently. And through it all, the wisdom of your immune system is carefully balancing its activity, sending in just enough forces to attack and eliminate the virus particles and injured cells. Then, letting the inflammation subside, Picture your immune cells leaving the area where their work has finished and see instead gentle nurturing waves of soothing love flowing into the now healthy cells of your body, of the organs of your body, making them stronger and better able to do their jobs. Picture unnecessary inflammation being eliminated by special cells, spraying the area with cooling energy and balance is being restored. Picture it now. And let this wise process continue within you while you let yourself float back to that pleasant, loving, special place of yours. Refresh that feeling of contentment and love and spirit. Feel the sense of gratitude for all these inner gifts. And now just picture yourself looking and feeling really healthy and energized and happy, doing something you really love doing in the future. Next week, next month, next year, wherever you go, trust your image. Step into it and be that person. Because each time you picture yourself the way you really want to be, you become more and more that person. Because that's the person you really are, down deep inside.
And then, when you're ready, gradually bring yourself back to an awareness of the space around you, the colors and shapes, the movements around you. Sense your breathing. Sense how comfortable you feel in your body. Good. And know by just taking a deep breath in and letting go, wherever you may be, you can relax and reinforce all of these feelings and learnings and help speed your healing and block yourself from infection by any and all microorganisms. Great. Good. And remember, you can watch this and all the other life meditations at drmiller.com forward slash life meditations. The imagery you've just heard comes from my COVID imagery series. When you go to drmiller.com, um, you'll be able to see how to, to, uh, to access those. You can go to my shopping website called shopdrmiller.com forward slash donate um, to donate. But if you go to just shop.drmiller.com, you'll find imagery products that I've done, downloads as well as CDs, VD. Also, the books I've written, everything's there. Go to drmiller.com slash COVID, C-O-V-I-D, and you'll find free imagery, um, which is based upon the imagery that I did with you just uh, today. And for those of you who want to do some individual work with me, I am doing online consulting and life coaching. You can connect with me to do that. Uh, for, for coaching, go to drmiller.com slash coaching and uh, full information will be there. So thanks again for being with me. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks from now. Again, if you're getting the newsletter, uh, which you get by going to drmiller.com, uh, I'll be writing to you within a couple of days, giving you a little more follow-up on what you can do to expand on what we did today, as well as to inform you about this next very exciting <laughs> upcoming webinar, because it's going to be uh, based on the time of the year, the special, uh, special celebrations, such as Christmas, uh, this time of returning to the light. So... Until then, namaste. Thank you so much for being here today. And do take care of yourself. Wear your masks. If you enjoyed this video and found its information helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe to Dr. Miller's YouTube channel. Doing this will help to get Dr. Miller's content to more and more people. If you'd like to watch the entire webinar series, you can do so at drmiller.com slash life meditations. That's drmiller.com slash life meditations. Be present, be kind, and be well.